Hey everybody! Welcome back to our channel. So today we've got a really cool video for you guys. We've got a five-way collaboration video with us, the High Desert Homestead, Big Sky at Night, Homestead Witchery, and Arizona Homestead. So I hope you really enjoy this collaboration video. Go check out all those other channels and see how they answer the same questions that we're going to answer today. Alright, so to start this thing off, I'm just going to give you guys a little bit of information about us in case you're checking us out due to one of those other channels. Thank you so much. Yes, yes. So, we are Simple Life Reclaimed. I'm Melanie. I'm Gary. And together we have a family um, of three children. We have a couple of older children as well that pop in now and again that we're helping to raise. So our homestead is located in between Las Vegas and Kingman, out in the middle of nowhere. We're in the Mojave Desert and uh, the desert climate itself is an arid climate. It is extreme. It is uh, no joke or anything like that. It doesn't have a whole lot of water. We actually get about two to six uh, inches of rain every single year. So the vegetation out here, there's not a whole lot of vegetation. Desert climates are known for that. It's hard to grow anything out here and the plant life that we do have is Joshua trees, creosote bushes, uh, mesquite trees, Fair cacti, high. and that's really about it. Growing anything out here, it's a real challenge. It can be done. It can be, but it is a challenge. All right, so all of us Home Center channels have all been given the same questions, and we're gonna go ahead and answer them to the best of our ability, our experience, and knowledge. So, first off, Gary, hit me up with the first question. Let's do it. Why did we choose the desert to homestead? Um, for us, the re main reason why we chose the desert to homestead in is because we were already living in the desert. We came from Las Vegas, Nevada. When we were going to purchase a house, the market at that time was just booming like crazy. And every time that we put in an offer in a house in Las Vegas, some cash buyer came in and we probably it up put in us. like 10, 14 offers or something like that. Yeah. It was, it was ridiculous. So we always wanted to live the country lifestyle. Yeah. It was something that we always dreamed of, but we just didn't know how we were going to make it work for our family. So he woke up one morning and he says, Mel, I don't know why, but I have this real strong feeling that like God's telling us that we need to go out to Arizona, maybe look towards where your dad is. And I said, well, if you feel that way, let's do it. So we called up the bank and, uh, Basically, it was like, hey, can we get an acceptance if we get a house out there? And they said, yeah. So we started looking for you. Yep. We looked at a bunch of different houses that were out here in this area. Just so happened the one that was directly across the street from my parents went up for sale. It was like literally from God because this house wasn't on the market when we first started looking. And then when we started looking in this direction, boom, it pops up, it's on the market. So. We put in our offer. We actually ended up purchasing this house for $40,000 lower than the asking price. So yeah. we got so blessed, so lucky, and I just, this is where we were ended up meant to be. Um, we were still helping my parents with raising of the three older children, and they needed our help, and so it just, it all went full circle. We wanted to live the country lifestyle, and this was financially a great, suit for us as well as perfectly. yeah a perfect location as well as far as being close to my family and close to his work and then having the space peace and quiet so ultimately kind of long but I'm trying to try make it short that's how we ended up in uh, this particular desert homestead all right Gary you're up so what are the pros of homesteading in a desert climate well if you can make it in the desert you can make it anywhere there's not a whole lot of snow so you don't have to really shovel anything. I mean, it does freeze out here, but there's not a whole lot of snow. There's tons of outdoor activities as well as sports, adventures. You want to go quadding, you want to go backpacking, you want to go climbing, you want to do anything like that. You can do it in the desert. You can do anything that you want. Even if you wanted to go snowboarding or skiing, yeah. you can go up to the mountains that are out here. So And there's lots of fishing, there's lots of swimming, fishing, kayaking. swimming, kayaking. There's lots of it, but yeah, it's uh, there's a lot of that. So I got the pros of living in the desert climate. What are the cons of living in the desert? Hmm. Well, I would have to go with 
the obvious thing of there's not a lot of water. To grow anything out here, it takes a lot of soil amendment. The soil that's out here is very um, alkaline and it's a lot of caliche. And so it's very, very hard when you're digging into the ground to do any kind of work out here. You're going to dig like six inches into the ground and find a massive boulder. And so it's physically a lot of backbreaking labor. We have really harsh summers out here. Yep. The winters out here, it's freezing winters. We have a ton of insects that are out here. There's lots of hopping and crawling things. The spiders are like this big, and that's like your average spider. It's a wolf spider mm -hmm. as well as a uh, huntsman spider. So if you're an arachnophobic, then you're gonna hate it out here. I'm I, arachnophobic. I'm actually the one that goes and gets all the spiders in the house. Gary's the baby, I'm the spider getter. <laughs> Gary's scared of them. If they're crawling by, he's like, <laughs> not me, I'm like, oh, there's a spider. <laughs> a big freaking spider, man. This is, I know, freaking they're huge. <laughs> he's like, uh, that, that thing's huge. Not only do we have crazy amount of spiders and insects out here, but we also have one of the most deadliest snakes in the world. It's the Mojave Green Rattlesnake. And that thing, if it bites you, you gotta get flighted for life by a helicopter and make it to an emergency room and pray and hope to God that they have anti-venom that will, you know, hopefully do its job and take care of the venom inside your body. That's no joke. Every time that we see one of those snakes, we kill them. I'm not playing around. I'm not gonna try to pick it up and move it and let it go slither up on somebody else, one of my neighbors, and then have them die. So if we see a green Mojave rattlesnake, you did. There are other snakes that are out here too, the king snakes. The king snakes, um, I'm cool with those guys. They're good. They actually eat the rattlesnakes. Yep. So if we see the king snakes, we do just move those guys politely off of our property and let them slither on to live another day. It's just the green Mojaves that they're dead. Next question is, what is the biggest city we have ever lived in and would you go back to city living if you had a golden opportunity laid before you? Las Vegas, Nevada is the city that we lived in. If I had an option to uh, go back or anything like that, there, no, no, no. There's no way, uh, honestly. I don't care if somebody was giving me a million bucks to go back to the city. I turn it down. The society norms and everything else has been getting ridiculous over the years and it's something that I don't want to be a part of anymore. That's uh, part of the reason why we wanted to get out of the city as well and live more so out in the country and it just so happened it worked out perfectly for us to be able to get out. And now that we've been out for five years, there ain't no way. Never. I don't want to. I reject the society norms. I don't want to go back there. So nobody can pay me a billion dollars. I don't really care. Like, no, money, money doesn't buy happy. happiness. Yeah. That doesn't. What we're doing now is making me more happier than anything else. The question is, what is or was our job um, before we ended up coming out here and moving out here? I still... Uh, work at the same job and we're working at the same place for nine years. I'm a tour guide and uh, yeah, I love my job. I love working outside, I love working outdoors and a perfect fit for me. So it uh, makes it very, uh, very fun. Right now I'm a stay at home mom and I also do like odd jobs and gigs in between. I do photography as well as I work conventions and like expos and stuff. But my number one job obviously is being a mom and being a wife. I will never allow any of my uh, those other things that I do, my gigs or my photography or anything to come before my job of being a mom and being a wife. Ultimately, that's my job is being a mom and a wife. Some of you guys might disrespect that, that's fine. But for us, that's what's really important is that I'm here to raise our children and to help maintain our family and get us to be progressing as a family unit. And that's what my job is, most and foremost, number one. Again, we reject a lot of the normal society norms these days. Okay, so next question. How did you get into the homesteading lifestyle? Well, both of us, when we were very little before we got moved to Las Vegas itself. We came from farming communities itself, so we knew of a lot of people that took care of themselves by hunting, you know, farming on their own land or having gardens or any of those kind of things. So we had that kind 
uh, instilled to us when we were little. We want to hone in on our homesteading skills and learn and be more self-sufficient so that way we don't have to go to the store as much. We don't have to be dependent on going to the store to buy our food and everything like that when they just pump them full of preservatives when we can actually do it ourselves. It's a lot of work but we are willing to put in that work itself and we're going to just continue to learn. And then to add on to that, one of the things that got me into homesteading is that I've always uh, grew up around like prepper type people. Taking all of that knowledge that I have that's been instilled in me from watching other people do it, the book knowledge, and now me trying to actually do it myself so that way I can be the next generation that passes it on to the next generation, which would be our children one day when they get older. So this stuff doesn't get lost. Um, there's a lot of knowledge that has been lost just because if you don't pass it on then that's where it stops And so I want it. It's very important to me that we pass this sort of stuff on So that way it doesn't get lost and that it does get preserved And so for me, that's why I really wanted to get into homesteading due to the prepping that I enjoy doing And it's always a good idea to be prepared yeah. And we can read all we want, but until we actually put it into practice, that's it's just your say. Your say, yeah, exactly. So it's one thing that we want to do is put it into practice and actually try use, it. Use the knowledge and skills that we have read and everything, and actually see if we can actually do mimic it. it or do it. So yeah. See what it takes to do it. Especially in our planet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, what is the biggest predator in your area? Well, first, I would say rattlesnakes. That is definitely a huge predator. If it gets into our backyard, it could hurt our dogs, it could hurt our kids, it could hurt our livestock, it could do a lot of uh, damage. So I would definitely say rattlesnakes, but there's coyotes out here. There's also hawks out here. There's falcons out here. There's also bobcats out here, as well as mountain lions. So kind of like part B to that question, how do you deal with said predator? So with the rattlesnakes, we have a 38 special and <laughs> they actually sell snake shot for it. And that's what everybody in this area has. And it's not any secret or anything like that. It's that's what everybody uses and everything like that. When people think of the desert, they think of extreme heat. How do you manage this during the hot months? So Gary and I don't have an air conditioner in our house and you might be thinking how the heck do you live without an air conditioner in the desert? And I'll tell you, it's a swamp cooler. Yep. So we use one swamp cooler and it blows and cools off the entire house. Our house is usually about 75 degrees in the summertime. It could be 120 outside but it's 75 degrees in the house. Outside, when we're outside working in the yard, one thing that you'll notice is that Gary and I are always wearing long sleeves. And again, it seems like an oxymoron. Why are you wearing long sleeves when it's so hot outside? And the reason is because if you're protecting your skin from the sun, you're not gonna get a sunburn. And then when you do sweat, the air blows through your clothes a little bit, and it creates like your own personal body swamp cooler. And that's just how it works, and that's how we stay cool. We'll also take some towels every now and again and we'll soak them wet and we'll kind of wrap them and stick them around our neck or stick them up on top of our head. Um, there's a reason why people in like Saudi Arabia wear a lot of headgear and complete body coverings. It's because they're in a very hot climate and they're protecting their body and their selves from the sun. And so we kind of mimic a little bit of that. Yeah. The next question is, are you off grid completely, partly or fully on grid and why? We are partially off-grid. We get our water from the well that is out here itself. It's all plumbed within the unit that we are in, but not to all the rest of the units itself. That is one thing that why we went into the unit that we did where we live. But we ended up having to pay a water bill. That water bill is used to service the well and service all the pumps and service the piping if anything breaks or anything like that. So if the piping and the plumbing to my house I got to deal with but all the everything else we just pay a service fee basically for them to use it other than that we have no cell service there, there's just absolutely none out here we have satellite internet so our internet isn't the best so we have to go with off-grid internet type we're on grid with power we have a septic tank pretty confined and how it is 
we're happy with the monthly bills that we do have to pay with the house. I can't complain. In your climate, are you able to forage and survive off the land? Ooh, well, I don't know. <laughs> this is something that I would like to learn more about where we're at. There's really only like crippling pears out here. Where we're at, we just don't really have a lot of that type of plant. If we were out like lost wandering in our forest, I'd have to catch a jackrabbit or something to eat to survive. Or I'd have to start eating bugs or something because there's literally it would be um, survival of the fittest and humans would have to dominate over the animals and just eat whatever animal that we can get because there's just not a lot of vegetation out here that would be something that we could survive on. As for water, you just go to the washes, find a mesquite tree that is thriving and start digging down next to it, you'll find water. Yep. What livestock animals do you think actually thrive out here in the desert? Um, I actually think that the cows and the rabbits and um, chickens and all those types of animals, they actually do really great out here. There's no problem with them, but it's just like most things, if you give them a proper habitat and you give them all of the things that they're going to need just as we as humans would need, like shade and water, um, and then in the winter you would need an area where you can get warm, as long as you have those things, I think that the animals would do great out here. All right, so on the flip side, Gary, what kind of animals do you think would fail out here? Oh man, anything that needs a lot of water. So trying to grow fish or anything like that, you, you good luck. It's just not gonna happen. The only thing that you might be able to do is like tilapia, but even still, the amount of algae and everything else because the sun is just so brutal with all water aspects and you're gonna have to add water like crazy. And, you know, just exotic animals that don't live in the desert. I don't know. I think penguins would do horrible. Penguins out would here. do horrible, yeah. I'm like I'm trying to think of like what what is there? I don't think of any I don't know of any animal that's a livestock animal that's exclusively cold hardy and that can't handle the heat. As long as they have shade, food, and water, pretty much any animal will do fine out here, as long as you're providing them with those elements in order to survive. And like Gary said, the fish, yeah, you're not gonna be raising fish in the desert. No, that's basically it. Yeah. No. I'm interested to see what you guys have to say. Yeah, I'm this. really serious. I'm curious about that, honestly. So what natural disasters do we have out here in the desert? And what ones have we actually dealt with? All right, so really the only natural disaster that we get out here is flooding. And I know it sounds weird because it's the desert and it's so dry, how could you get flooding? The thing is, is that when it does rain, it pours. And the soil is not um, it's prepared leaky. to absorb so. the water. So the water just runs off the surface. And um, depending on how sloped your property and stuff is, We've had um, an issue where the water has run over our property and we haven't had complete flooding to where the inside of our house was flooded, but the underneath of our house got flooded. And so we have to deal with that. But other than the flooding, there's really no other major natural disaster that we have dealt with in our particular area. As far as the desert is concerned, you have flooding and you have the big haboob windstorms, which is like a wind and sandstorm that we can get. It's like a giant cloud, a wall, a cloud of just just sand and dirt and dust. Um, and that's pretty much it. That's like, that's all there is in the desert. Yeah. And extreme, you know, going long periods of time without rain, that's like a drought, you know? That's a natural disaster, because you can't, you can't do anything can't if do you don't anything. have any rain, so. Mm -hmm. That, that's pretty much it. I think that's honestly one of the best things about um, being in Arizona is that we don't have to deal with a lot of natural disasters. We don't have the earthquakes like California. Up in the Pacific Northwest, they get a lot of fires constantly. Um, California gets the earthquakes, which can cause a lot of damage as well. Out on the East Coast, they have those snows, those blizzards that are freezing everybody out. Down in Florida, you got the hurricane weather. Um, even in the Gulf, like Texas area and stuff, that, that Gulf of Mexico area, you got the, um, the hurricanes there as well. The central United States, you got the tornadoes, and again, a lot of that freezing weather coming down from Canada, coming through. 
um, high winds and stuff. And right here in Arizona, we're just kind of in the middle of nowhere, and so therefore we don't really get a lot of that. We just get a lot of the extreme hots and colds and droughts. All right, guys, so we got one question left for you guys, and it's a big one. If you could choose anywhere to homestead, would you still choose the desert? Why or why not? And I think this is going to be a complex, multi-layered question and answer for us. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Go ahead, Gary. Why don't you start, and then I'll add all the stuff. So, me personally, I do like living in the desert, but I don't like the summers. That is my biggest thing that I do not like, is how hot it gets out here. Ben, I've been, we've been out here for 20 years now, and it just, it's hot. You very know, hot. it's very, very hot, and you can't really run away from it when it's hot. There's only so much clothes you can really get off. Yeah. All right, and to try to bear it. And then even still, if you do that and you're outside, you're just gonna burn yourself, and burn you're yourself. gonna be, way worse than what you were. So, I want to, as you guys probably already know, uh, move up into the forest range area. We understand the desert climate. I wanna, I wanna be, honestly, I wanna be up in Idaho. That's where, once we drove up there, Idaho or Montana, uh, that's where I really, 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 really wanna be. It's very beautiful, green, I'm honestly... flourished with life. See, but for me, but. being grown up and raised in the desert, I'm kind of scared to move. Like, as much as I want to and I really want the trees and the forest and stuff, I'm scared of it being too cold and then us freezing. And I'm scared of getting snowed in year after year after year. There is plenty of reasons why people leave the snow, especially during their older years and retirement. Do I want to be 60 shoveling snow? Hell no. <laughs> Good point, I guess. Uh, All right, everybody. Well, that's it. That's our Desert Homesteaders collaboration video for 2020. I hope you guys got to know a bit about us and our homestead and some of our desert climate knowledge for our particular area. If you guys out there enjoyed our video and you want to hear some answers from other homesteaders that are in the desert climate, please follow down below to the link in the description. We have a list of the homesteaders that were joining in this collaboration with us. Check out their channels, give them some love. If you like how they do things and what they seem like and how they operate, feel free and give them a subscribe and like their videos and content, guys. Share that Desert Homesteader love because we're really a diamond in the rough out here. There's not many Desert Homesteaders and so we want to just, you know, rail us all in there and create this desert community. Thank you guys so much for coming and checking us out. If you guys liked us, hit that thumbs up button, hit that subscribe bell. Hit whatever you guys need to do. Drop Don't a comment. To drop us comments. Yes, please comment down below. I hope you guys learned a little bit about the desert climate. Maybe a little bit about us too. You know, if there's anything else that you guys would like us to answer, check us out on our next live video. It's going to be coming up this Wednesday. Hit us up in the Q and A, and we'll do our very best to answer as many questions as we can. And you know, we'll just continue this community, get us stronger, and keep going forward, guys. So. Thank you guys for coming along today and check us on our next one. Bye. Later.